Hey, I'm Michael Robinson and we're live here in the heart of Fort Lauderdale on 13th Street. Many people think about Fort Lauderdale and they think about the beautiful beaches and they think about the sunshine and warm weather, but there's a lot more to Fort Lauderdale. There are many communities that make up the city, like Las Olas, like Wilton Manors, like Flagler Village. Communities that have evolved over time through gentrification, through redevelopment and investments made by pioneers such as my guest who is going to be joining me today. One of the neighborhoods that is actually up and coming that everybody is talking about is called 13th Street. It sits geographically in Oakland Park and Poinsettia Heights area, south of Wilton Manors, north of Flagler Village and Las Olas. And with me is one of the pioneers of this amazing up and coming new gem of a city. Her name is Abby Lachlan, and Abby is an entrepreneur, she's an investor, and she's an visionary person. Welcome to the show, Abby. Thank you, Michael. So tell us about 13th Street. We're all kind of excited about it, and there's a buzz about what's happening. It's a happening place, for sure. It's mm -hmm. uh, a place that the city has identified as having, as having a, a future, as having a vision. And the city started with their investment in the neighborhood by doing what's known as complete streets, which is a program whereby the streets are narrowed to make it more pedestrian friendly. We've got bike lanes, a new sidewalk, and new infrastructure and lighting, and all of those things are the basic infrastructure that you need for, um, for an emerging neighborhood. So why 13th Street? What makes it so unique? It's, well, location, location, and location. Ah, the business um, model. It is in the middle. We are in South Middle River. We're in Middle River Terrace. We are in the midtown of Fort Lauderdale. Mm -hmm. And it is the spine that is connecting all of the, all of the different neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. On top of that, the housing stock that is here, the commercial housing stock, is very, very, um, adaptive mm -hmm. so there is uh, a lot of adaptive reuse that can go on uh, within the existing structures mm -hmm. I'm sort of someone who focuses on the middle mm -hmm. it's not uh, you know new construction it's not high-rise development but there is something that can be done with these these buildings mm -hmm. so you moved here from up north uh, there are a lot of options available to you to choose from what was so special about the area that made you decided to invest in it? Well, uh, number one, I could afford to buy the properties. Um, I could afford to make an assemblage. Uh, I didn't want to just be one of the uh, pioneers on a street. I wanted to be able to have enough of assemblage that I could actually make a difference mm -hmm. and start to have a conversation with the other buildings in the in the neighborhood so I was able to find a set of buildings that were all next to each other and you know make my 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 acquisitions and make a, a visual impact mm -hmm. on on this area and I think that's part of the success is when you can when you can do a cluster you can you can make a difference people can actually see something visually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's talk about the, the vision, talk, you're, you're mentioning vision. What do you envision this area becoming? Because I, I mentioned Flagler Village, I mentioned Las Olas, I mentioned Wilton Manors, they're very separate communities. Uh, how do you envision this, this neighborhood or this area evolving? I, it's, it's sort of taking the overflow from those neighborhoods. Those neighborhoods have al al already been um, developed to an extent where the, the, the price per square foot and the, the rental model won't work for a lot of emerging businesses. And I could, I could see that there are a lot of new businesses, a lot of startups that are hungry for space, hungry for community, hungry for collaboration and 
it's just not a, it's just not available anymore. And here we are, you know, right in the heart of Fort Lauderdale, near transportation, near the new Bright Line. Um, it's it's a place where people want to be and and can get to. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about the flavor of the area. Um, what is it like now for people who have never been here before? Uh, first of all, it feels safe. Uh, this was an area that had a lot of crime, a lot of prostitution, uh, uh, you know, a, a lot of issues here. There was a very strong uh, sort of uh, neighborhood presence here that was active in crime walks and, you know, doing everything they could to. Uh, to stop to stop that element so feeling safe then you also feel like the infrastructure has been cared for with the new sidewalks and the street lights and the and the bike lane you feel like you can walk and and um, connect to other to other neighborhoods and the set of stores here are all commercial you know one story commercial buildings with big plate glass windows it's the perfect opportunity for people to stroll have a bite to eat uh, shop a little bit but you need to bring in the new businesses the small businesses and that was the challenge why does somebody want to come into the neighborhood from other areas to spend money here why would someone want to come back we have unique businesses coming here that may not have opportunities in other places because of the high rents. For instance, we have a little bakery coming just to have a coffee shop where someone the locals can come and sit and chat and do their w Wi-Fi or meet, uh, meet for business opportunities. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's close. People come here on their one wheel. People come here on their scooters now. Um, there is an excitement about what is building and the, the businesses that are emerging mm -hmm. in, this, in this neighborhood. Tell me about what footprint you are going to be putting on 13th Street with your investment. It's going to look clean and crisp and well cared for and and lush and landscaped and comfortable and welcoming mm. this was not a welcoming neighborhood before it was it was dark there were bars on the windows um, you did not feel comfortable there is a tremendous amount of green space here that some other neighborhoods don't have i want to activate that i want to see that incorporated into what is uh, what is happening here um, my 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 footprint is starting off just making a visual impact on the exterior all new doors and windows fresh coat of paint those little differences make all the difference in the world mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so let's talk a little personal why did you move to Fort Lauderdale it's paradise it's the weather, it's, it's, I, I feel very, very comfortable here. Um, family lives here, family has been vacationing here for a while, but to live in the sunshine 365 a year mm -hmm. is very energizing, very, I just, I feel blessed to be able to, to, to live in this environment. I mean, we have everything. We have the beach, we have this, this, the city, we have, it's, it's everything under, under one ray of sunshine, and I'm very hopeful mm -hmm. for the future here. Let's tell, tell me a bit about your background. What did you do up north? I did the, I did the same thing. I, I just have a chip for the built environment. Um, I, I feel like old buildings have a soul, and they may not last forever, but they can certainly have another life and they can be you know reincorporated into part of the community and I I I don't like to see buildings neglected properties neglected so I'm always drawn towards an area that can can use a little use a little pep shall use we a little TLC. and uh, <laughs> I'm I'm completely uh, bootstrapped um, I've done I've I've owned uh, real estate companies I've 
done uh, mortgage banking. I've uh, been involved in all aspects of uh, condo conversion. Small, mid-sized properties are my, are my niche. Uh, resident, mostly residential, mixed use, things like that. Just, and I've uh, built a team over the years of great people and, and that's, that's part of the success. You get a great architect or a great builder or a you know, great tradesman and you can do you can do amazing things. Mm. My last question to you is that of uh, the situation you're in as a developer, a visionary. This is a man or male dominated world and has been for a very long time. We have seen the you know insurgence of the We Too movement. We've seen more women elected to Congress than ever before. Uh, it's sort of like the time of the women, right? Uh, in politics, for sure. What has been your success? What has been able to help you become so prominent in your world and figure out the nuances and go beyond what so many people have failed to do based on limitations that might have been placed upon them, perceived or otherwise? It just never occurred to me I couldn't. I was raised in a, in a progressive family where education was important, reading was important, learning was important, and I find that if you take the time to study and learn and read and watch, there are no limits to, to, to what you can do. And it's interesting that you said the We Too movement, you know, as opposed to the, the Me Too movement, because it is about we. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the success that women are having today, is that it is, it is a we movement. It's about community. It's about working together to accomplish goals. And I, I don't know if that's sort of been the way things it's in the past has been very sort of self-centered, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but the women's movement is a very collaborative uh, movement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that certainly it's allowing uh, others to see the potential of what can be. Uh, young girls, young yes. women who are now in high school or entering college, they see the potential of what they can accomplish, that it's absolutely limitless. It right. is absolutely limitless. And this. that the idea of glass ceilings uh, are being shattered yes. every day. And it's absolutely wonderful. And I congratulate you for Thank you. being a success in your field. And I know that you're going to be a role. You are and have been and will be a role model for others. And thank you very much for being with us, Abby. Thank you. I'm Michael Robinson. Until next time.